All right, look, Heracross got a few buffs in Gen 9. It now gets access to the move Trailblaze, which is able to boost its speed one stage, and the loaded dice item. Taking advantage of the loaded dice means that multi-hit moves are guaranteed to hit four to five times, meaning Heracross finally gets to be a cheap version of its mega form. Multi-hit moves like Pin Missile are suddenly extremely strong with even just four hits, but if you get a five hit, its power becomes 187 after stab. Plus, of course, it's even got the coverage with Rock Blast and Bullet Seed to help him out. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I honestly have a pretty crazy one for you. Hey, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so the general plan around my team revolves around this sticky web. I can make my slower attackers like Heracross, Sandslash, even Banette faster than the opponent and hit extremely hard. So I lead off with the Vikavolt here and we're basically just down to lay down some webs. Now, they lead off with the Amoongus, which actually ends up going for the U-turn, which tells me that is in fact not an Amoongus, and that is going to be uh, the Zorark. So, a little bit of Zorark tomfoolery is always fun, as they end up going right into the coma o And this is honestly one of the scarier mons out right now. With this thing's access to Klangor's Soul, it's able to set up, and Vikavolt has a bad time here, as I don't have much to do to it. So, I do set up my Sticky Web, however, they are going to go for the Klangor's Soul, which sets this thing up with a nice little plus one in every single stat. And if that wasn't enough, a lot of the time these things do also carry the Throat Spray, which does activate upon using sound moves. That does count as one, and he just pops the Throat Spray and gives him a nice little <laughs> extra boost in special attack. So I Volt Switch just to get my scared ass out of here, and this is extremely not good for me. I don't have much that can come in on this, or take an attack, or be able to outspeed it, especially after a boost. So when it comes down to it, here's the best thing I can do. I have a bulky Assault Vest Empoleon here, where... If they don't go for a super effective attack, I can actually potentially take one, so that is the plan. I go into the Empoleon here, I'm gonna go for the Ice Beam, and it turns out they just straight up go for close combat. Now I'm thinking, I've just been extremely hoed by a Throat Spray, expecting special attack, it does also carry a physical attack, so a nice little mix sweeper here, um, and that's a Galaxy Brain play, me expecting the special attack, but I, close combat's just always good, especially with the plus one from the boost anyway, so. I lose Empoleon straight off the bat, and I decide, okay, actually, I do have a plan here that could work. Essentially, I bring in Thick Thighs Jenga, and I can go for a Terra into the Fighting type and go for a Body Press and finish it. Now, since he went for the close combat against the Empoleon, I know he sees that super effective hit and just really wants to click that. However, uh, the best bet would definitely be going for a special attack here, as I imagine this is, it has to be uh, kind of just a mix attacker. But they do end up going for that close combat, and I am able to take that because I'm literally max defense on the stone joiner. So that's extremely clutch. It does get a defense drop and it pops my balloon to rain on my parade, but I can just finish him off with a body press, luckily with the Terra boost, plus that uh, yeah, back to even defense. It does take care of it. So we definitely dodged a bullet there. We also get the added benefit of people not knowing what stone joiner is all about because I literally have 20 base special defense, but them going for the close combat there really helped us out. So that thing's out of the way, and I do lose Empoleon, however, I have my sticky web up, and the plan is still in motion, baby, let's get it. So, they decide to bring in Amoongus on the Revenge Switch, and I figure nothing really wants to take a Spore here. I decide to go into the Vikavolt, though, if they do want to Spore this, uh, I'm honestly kind of fine with that. I can probably stall out a few sleep turns, but they actually end up going for the Terra here, and a lot of the time you don't notice Amoongus going for a Ghost Terra, which leads me to believe again... This has to be the Hisuian Zorark just out here playing his damn tricks again. So, puts the ghost on his head, and they do end up going for the Shadow Ball here with that uh, added boost from the Ghost Terra. It's gonna do it's gonna do a lot of damage. It doesn't actually end up knocking out the Vikavolt because, for whatever reason, this bug is thick as a bowl of oatmeal. So, I just go for the Volt Switch here. I'm thinking maybe I outspeed after the Sticky Web, though. Unfortunately, yeah, Hisuian Zorark is just quick as hell. Vikavolt, he looks like he'd be a quick guy, but just like the slowest thing ever because... Gen 7 does not believe in speed, so another Shadow Ball does take care of the Vikavolt, um, and that's honestly fine. I was able to get up my Sticky Web, did what I needed to do, and now I can go into the Sand Slash. So I figured Sand Slash can definitely take at least one attack from this thing, and finish it off with a knockoff, or at least knock it down to Focus Sash. So, uh, they do just stay in here, they go for that Shadow Ball once again, and Sand Slash with the natural bulk is able to at least take one. So, now I can tell his ass to knock it off, and it actually ends up taking care of it, as we noticed this thing was going to be Choice Scarf. So, that's always amazing getting Isui and Zorak's bitch ass out of here, because now I don't have to worry about, you know, anything pretending to be something else, and it's just good to, to know that that thing's taken care of. So, Sand Slash out here grabbing him a kill, by the way, you love to see it, Sand Slash 
actually doing some stuff. And it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day once again once the terror gets out of here. So we go ahead and decide to have a nice little picnic on the empty battlefield with our leftovers. And now they decide to go into the Torterra. So when Torterra comes in, it gets caught up in the sticky web. I know I'm going to be faster. And pretty much 95% of the time you see Torterra, it's going to be a Shell Smash loaded dice set. So I'm just going to go for the knockoff and get some solid damage while also getting rid of... Uh, of that loaded dice basically stops them from being able to use bullet seed and hit multiple times uh, which is exactly what happens but I just died at two anyway but I get some solid chip there while also making sure this thing doesn't get any good rolls on its multi-hit moves so Sand Slash did what it needed to do and an important note is also that this Torterra couldn't really go for a shell smash with the sticky web around it's just not gonna have the speed uh, regardless so at this point now I decide to go into the bayonet so I know that I can take an attack from this thing especially since bullet seed won't be able to at least guarantee it hits five times uh, so what I plan to do is go for a nice little sword stance here I know that I'm also faster and I also have the potential to cursed body which disables uh, whatever move they hit me with turns out they actually just go for the headlong rush uh, which is you know not a multi-hit move so that just does a shit ton of damage knocks me down to three and uh, that's not really ideal but at this point I can just go for a knockoff even with his item already gone after the sword stance it's gonna take care of it so Bayonet does grab himself a kill, however, it also kills itself because I have the life orb on there. So, I mean, at least cool, Bayonet was able to do something, but, you know, it is what it is. And at this point, I'm down to two Pokemon left, but I have the absolute ace in my pocket, which is the Heracross. So, on the empty switch, they decide to go into the Rotom Wash. Now, ordinarily, Heracross versus Rotom Wash, not looking too great in my favor. However, I have myself the access to Bullet Seed, and with that loaded dice, at least four hits is definitely going to take care of this thing and <laughs> we're able to surprise the shit out of the washing machine and that does take care of it. So, we say we will not be washing shit today and now Heracross also gets himself a nice little moxie boost. So, at plus one attack, I'm actually looking really decent against the remainder of their team which is going to be the Amoongus along with the King Gambit. So, first of all they decide to go into the King Gambit and I'm thinking their best play here is Sucker Punch, but even with this thing's ability, which is going to be the Supreme Overlord, it gets uh, a boost from the four fallen Pokemon. However, I am able to take a Sucker Punch nicely, so I just go for the close combat here, and they're just immediately actually going to switch out into the Amoongus, which leads me to believe they're trying to bait me into close combats to try to get my defense drops, but Amoongus is going to come in, and while the sticky web drop doesn't really matter, what does matter are these hands. Maybe I go for that close combat, and it actually does just over half which is honestly insane damage. Um, and the Amoongus actually ends up having the Eject button. It's gonna activate its ability, and with the Eject button, it switches itself out. They only have one other option to go into, which is the King Gambit. And now the next time Amoongus comes in, it's gonna have its Regenerator ability activated and have a little bit more health. So King Gambit comes in, gets caught up in my web, of course, and uh, nothing changes with the Supreme Overlord, except I have a minus one defense at this point, but a close combat definitely kills. So I'm just continuing to just go for some of them punches as they just go right back into the Amoongus and Heracross is over here just making this dude slipping around on ice not knowing what to do. Um, it does come in and you can see the regenerator does make it pretty healthy but it brings it to the range where yeah definitely two close combats are gonna do it and here's where I start to see the gears turning in Buddy's head. He figures maybe actually with Amoongus switching out getting another regenerator maybe I'm actually the win condition with the Amoongus instead of the King Gambit so he actually switches back into the King Gambit for one final time as I'm just over here just basically just punching the hell out of everything um, in a close combat obviously is gonna take care of this thing and now we don't have to worry about the sucker punch killing so I imagine their first plan was to get my defense drops with the close combat to enough where a sucker punch would kill but I plan to just essentially switch into the, the stone the stone journey anyway but that's gonna take care of that thing and the good news is we also get ourselves another moxie boost so Heracross is out here just being an absolute menace like this thing truly deserves to be in his pimp ass pink color and Back comes Amoongus, this thing is just sitting just above half here, uh, however, after a moxie boost, um, I'm just going to go for the pin missile here. I probably actually should have been clicking pin missile uh, regardless, because with five hits, I believe it should be fine anyway, but that does take care of the Amoongus, um, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, kind of just a ridiculous end game, but we love to see Heracross making stuff happen, and I thought that was just a fun game. So, regardless, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. Make sure to leave a like on the video because YouTube appreciates it, and it really helps out the channel. And if you guys have any recommendations for sets that you'd like me to use, or just any Pokemon in general, I'm definitely open to trying some new stuff out. 
I'm having a great time just generally messing around to make these videos and as long as you guys enjoy them I will definitely keep it up and if somehow you do even want some more content go ahead and follow me on Twitch my link is in the description I stream there multiple times a week doing things like Nuzlocke runs it's just a nice change in pace to kind of hang out with the community and we're always having a good time